you're expected to put work first. So for example, for me, there were times when I had to be told to stay on call until 11 p.m. Research shows that having internship experience on your resume can significantly boost your chances of landing your first job. I got an internship with a member near my district and I was really excited about it. The problem is it was unpaid. While students with internship experience have a head start on the job market, a significant number of internships in the U.S. are still unpaid. To be a credible freelancer, you needed to have something to show to the employer. And for you to show something to the employer, you inevitably had to engage in the unpaid work economy. And I think that was the big catch-22 for me. For many students, these internships sometimes blur the lines between opportunity and exploitation. In 2021, nearly 50% of internships were unpaid. This statistic brought attention to the widespread culture of unpaid internships. Millennials often seek out tech and healthcare jobs due to the high pay and flexible hours. But there are also millennials who work in media, fashion, and PR, industries that are notorious for offering unpaid internships. These types of internships have proven to further inequity, giving opportunities to a select few while isolating others. And oftentimes, the organizations seeking the interns benefit more than the candidate. Research also shows that unpaid interns don't actually get an advantage in landing their first full-time role when compared to those who didn't do any internships at all. So why are unpaid internships still so prevalent in our workforce today? In the 1970s, internships became more common across various industries as the college population grew due to the inclusion of women and other groups. This expansion of the college population occurred during a tight job market. So unpaid internships became seen as a way to help get these folks some experience in lieu of a full-time paying job. By 1992, about 17% of college students had participated in an internship with that number increasing to about 50% by 2008. This year, in our most recent data, 75% of graduating seniors said they participated in some type of internship experience. Today, you pretty much need an internship to get a job. Research shows that over 80% of all big four accounting firms have employees who have previously interned before, and that extends to tech companies like Google, IBM, and Facebook. Big retailers like Gap and Target also onboard full-time staff based on previous internship experience. Employers want people with experience, even if it's an entry-level job. And this is the reality for students from all over the world. In 2016, Arnie moved to New York City from New Delhi to get her master's degree in journalism at Columbia University. Arnie did nine journalism internships in India. They were mostly unpaid, but she was shocked to learn that the industry was just as competitive in New York as it was in India. The rules of the game are still the same, whether I'm in India or in New York. I need to know the right kind of people. Um, I need to have certain work experience um, to really stand out. And I think that was, again, um, something that I didn't think I calibrated earlier. She was able to get her current role by continuously seeking out opportunities and networking with other journalists, not because of her internships. The same scenario happens for U.S. citizens interning abroad as well. I come from like a Taiwanese American background, so I thought it was the perfect opportunity for me to actually use my Chinese in a working setting. So that's kind of the reason why I wanted to go to Shanghai. Jolene was born and raised in Sugarland, Texas, but she thought working in Shanghai would give her an opportunity to practice her Chinese language skills. Something I didn't expect is the working hours. There were times when I had to be told to stay on call until 11 p.m. because it was something that <laughs> required me to pay me attention to. And it didn't matter where I was or what I was doing. Like I had to drop it all to pay attention to this situation. I am super grateful that I was in a position where it wasn't financially stressful. I was able to have the luxury of doing those unpaid internships. But at the same time, I think um, sometimes unpaid internships are the only opportunities available to people. Jolene is the exception. Many students can't afford to work unpaid internships. And unpaid internships aren't only in media or PR. They're also prevalent in government and nonprofit jobs in the U.S. 27% of internships in the federal government are unpaid. 
That number is even higher for nonprofit internships. The Fair Labor Standards Act is a law that helps determine whether internships should be paid. But the law only applies to for-profit companies like Amazon, Walmart, and small businesses, and it excludes governments, nonprofits, and charities. There's also an old Supreme Court case that ties all of this together. In the late 1940s, the Portland Terminal Company offered a training program for railroad brakemen. They served for seven to eight days and ultimately were unpaid. Some workers sued to get paid, but the court decided the interns should be classified as trainees rather than employees. After the ruling, the US Department of Labor created an exemption for governments, nonprofits, and charities. And that's just the beginning. There are several reasons why these types of internships still exist. Some employers simply don't have the budget to pay interns. For others, it's more of a tactic to save costs on recruitment. There are still many who are willing to take unpaid internships if they believe it will help them advance their careers. Businesses aren't incentivized to pay up if there are a lot of interns who are willing to work for free. And with such a large number of people seeking jobs, this happens all too often. In 2016, millennials became the largest generation of the US labor force. In 2019, 32% of state and local government employees were identified as millennials. So many in this category understand the competitive culture of interning, which includes unpaid internships. But some nonprofits are looking for solutions. Carlos Vera, co-founder of nonprofit Pay Our Interns, says he knows firsthand what it's like to be an unpaid intern. He interned at the White House European Parliament and at the House of Representatives, but while interning, he worked side jobs as a waiter and a Starbucks barista to financially support himself during those unpaid internships. Coming from a working class background, I couldn't ask my parents for money. So what I did was I interned about 30 hours a week. I was taking a side job, working at 20 hours, and then taking six courses as a 17 year old. On top of his financial struggles, Carlos realized nobody looked like him except the custodian. I started seeing that a lot of the people in my cohorts were very well off. You know, these are the people that are gonna be the future judges, lawyers, professors, elected officials, journalists. When you have so many people just from a certain class, it really warps reality. Data shows minorities are less likely to get paid internships compared to their white counterparts. Graduating seniors who were women, first-generation students, black students, and Hispanic students were underrepresented as paid interns in 2019. The tipping point was when I was talking to my mentee and he admitted to me that he had skipped out on buying groceries for the week just to pay for the dry cleaning cost uh, for his internship. So I think at that point I was like, you know what, I have to do something. And this is how Pay Our Interns was born. The goal was to bring attention to unpaid internships in Congress. Hi everyone, it's Carlos Mark Vera with Pay Our Interns. He invested $1,300, the amount of his bi-weekly paycheck, into the organization and started making calls to figure out which offices had paid and unpaid interns. In 2017, Carlos and his mentee published a report called Experience Doesn't Pay the Bills, which showed only 8% of Republican House representatives and 3.6% of Democratic representatives paid their interns. One year after publishing the report, Pay Our Interns worked to double the number of Senate Democrats who offered paid internships. The nonprofit also helped create the first ever internship fund allocation, securing $5 million in the Senate and $8.8 .8 million in the House of Representatives. Not only did we you know, call up members, the ones that paid and didn't pay, we also create a roadmap on how to sustainably change this. And what we said is there needs to be legislation in every office. And then after two years of doing that, you know, we were able to convince Congress to come together and pass funding specifically to pay interns. Bryson, a marketing director, felt uncomfortable that his company didn't pay its interns. A lot of the interns that I have tend to be around the same age I am, or sometimes I've had interns that are even older than me. It's such a, it's such a weird position to be in, because like, here I am, same age of these people, but I'm getting paid and they're not. After he was selected to run the company's internship program, he set out to make the program beneficial for interns and not just the company. He helps his interns by writing recommendations, references, and providing beneficial experiences to fit each of the interns' goals. This internship is going to be tailored around you. It's not tailored around us and our company. It's tailored around you and what you want to get out of it. Bryson says he brought up the issue of paying the interns to upper management at his company. 
but nothing has changed since. And I think that's the hardest part is it's kind of like a double-edged sword. I've been able to create these beneficial experiences and create internship opportunities that interns have walked away from and enjoyed, despite the fact that they weren't being compensated. Now they're looking at it as, oh, you've created this successful internship programs. You've created these experiences that these interns have enjoyed while they aren't being compensated. So why should we compensate them if you're already doing a good job doing that? Thanks to people like Bryson and Carlos, the culture around unpaid internships is changing. Since the 2011 lawsuit against Fox Searchlight, more companies are addressing their internship payment policies. In 2011, Eric Glott and Alexander Footman brought forth the lawsuit claiming they should have been paid as interns for production assistance on the movie Black Swan. It took five years of litigation, but Fox ultimately settled the case and paid Eric $7,500 and Alex $6,000. This lawsuit brought attention to other companies who didn't pay their interns. Viacom, NBC Universal, and Condé Nast, who had previously hired unpaid interns, shelled out millions in settlement dollars. Sony and Columbia Records were also hit with a class action lawsuit by a former intern and 500 others who claimed they should have been paid. Vice Media also admitted in an editor's note in 2013 that it used to hire unpaid interns, a practice that has now stopped. CNBC Make It reached out to the previously mentioned companies for a comment, but didn't receive a response. Recently, Condé Nast reinstated its internship program on LinkedIn after eliminating it eight years ago, this time with all paid opportunities. And because of these high-profile lawsuits, the number of unpaid internships has recently decreased. In a 2019 survey, 36.3% of respondents said they had unpaid internships at for-profit companies. A year later, that number decreased to 28.7%. This is a step in the right direction, but the issue continues. I know there's a big push on Capitol Hill to end unpaid internships for staffers in legislative offices. Uh, and that does seem to be uh, moving the needle. It's not gonna just magically go away. As long as someone or you know an institution benefits from free labor, it's gonna continue incentivize employers to do better, right? Because like there will be consequences if you don't.